How's it going everyone? In today's video, I wanted to go over how to create Gutenberg blocks with advanced custom fields. Advanced custom fields just released 5.8 not too long ago, so I started digging into it and I gotta say, this is kind of a game changer for Gutenberg. It makes the editing experience really nice, particularly for developers. So we'll be going over how to do all the things with it. We're gonna go over how to register a block, add fields to those blocks, and then we're also going to learn how to display our block in the editor and on the front end of our website. Remember, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified about my weekly WordPress tutorials. All right, let's get started. So some of you may recognize this design right here. This is from the how to manage your data better with ACF and custom post types tutorial. And so we're gonna be recreating it as an ACF block and you can drag it around obviously because it's Gutenberg and you can add another toaster here and we can fill out the information and we can start to see that we get that information down here. So we're gonna be going step-by-step step in this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is jumping over to our functions.php. So let's go over there. And the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we need to register our block with advanced custom fields. So what we're doing here is we're checking to make sure that ACF is activated and then we're gonna be adding an action to a very specific ACF action, ACF init. So it happens very early in the process. And the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to define a function here called a register ACF block types. So function, and then we're going to open up some curly brackets here. And then we're going to call a function that's called ACF register block type. So now in version 5.8 of advanced custom fields, this function now exists. And it takes an array of parameters like the name, which is the slug. So that's going to be what's going to be used in code. And then we have the title, the human readable thing, and then a description, the render template, which is really important. And we'll go over that here in a second. The next is a dash icon of what we want to appear in the editor and then some keywords that we can assign to it to make it a little bit more searchable. So let's go back to our dashboard here and add a new page and we can create a new block and we'll get a new one right here called toaster. However, when we click on it, it's just going to load for a second and then we're not gonna really get anything. We're definitely using that block, but that block doesn't really have anything inside of it. So what we have to do next is actually add some fields to it. So let's jump down to custom fields and add new. And the main thing here that if you've ever worked with uh, advanced custom fields before, you know that this location piece right here is what tells ACF where to put those fields. And with the new update, you can change that from post type to block. It's the second from the last one. And then there is going to be a drop down here and you can select which block that is registered with ACF you want to have these fields appear on. So we're gonna to hit toaster. And next I'm gonna fill out all the fields, but I'm not gonna make you watch all of that. So here we go. And all this is, is it's just a repeater with name, price, hour rating, you know, all this kind of stuff. So this is all just regular advanced custom field stuff. So we hit publish and now let's go back to our page and hit add new and let's at a new block again and hit our toaster thing here. And we don't have anything appearing here, but we do have this now. Over here on the far right, we have add toaster. And if you've worked with repeaters, you know that's exactly what we want. And we can click add toaster. And now we have all of the fields that we just created in the field group appear over here in the repeater. So let's fill a couple of these out. All right, so I have filled out a couple of those. And when we click out of it, it doesn't seem to have changed anything. We can find that toaster block again, um, but nothing really shows up. But if we switch to edit mode, we just get those same fields over here that we saw over here in the sidebar. So what appears in here actually is that template that we were going to talk about. So let's talk about it. So let's jump back over to our functions.php. 
So remember this render template right here? Well, that's what gets loaded on the back end here and on the front end of the website. So what we need to do is we need to actually load in our ACF fields right here. So let's create that file. It's going to be under template parts, create a new folder called blocks, and then a folder under that called toasters, toaster. And then finally inside of there, we're going to create a file called toaster.php. All right, so let's open up some PHP tags here. And I'm going to copy and paste in a block of code here. And all of this is doing is making sure that we get the class names and the align class names that WordPress can, uh, offers to the user. So if we go back over here to our WordPress page, down here at the bottom right, we have an advanced accordion and it looks like you can put in an additional class name. And so that's where this is coming from, is this block variable has an attribute called class name, or a, uh, an array key, I should say, class name. And then also, when you align the block, it will also give you a class name. So if we were to go over here and click on align center, align left, or align right, all of those will be passed in this block variable. So we're, what we're doing is we're creating a class name variable that we're eventually going to put on the markup itself. And we are going to implement that right here. We're just gonna close out PHP and take that class and put it into this div. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the table itself. So that's gonna look something like this. And all this is, is if you watched the other tutorial, exactly the same table that we were using then. So it has just a table and we're checking to see if there are toasters in that repeater. And if there are, we're just going to be outputting their values like so. We're using the subfield, so there's nothing special about doing it differently inside of a Gutenberg block. That's kind of the beauty of this whole thing. So let's save this and go back to our dashboard. So let's refresh. And now we have our HTML and all of our ACF fields filled out. We can click in here and we see that all of our information is still there. Let's collapse these really quick. And just like you can in advanced custom fields, you can reorder these uh, repeater fields and it shows automatically here in the center. So this shows some pretty powerful features that you can do and I just chose a repeater because it's a little bit more complex, but this works with any ACF fields that I'm aware of. So this is really powerful. And if we hit publish and hit view page, we can see that that same information is displayed here on the front end of the site. And just to drive the point home a little bit further, let's just add a block ahead of this. And let's just type in, you know, some gibberish here. Hit update. And we hit refresh out here. And it works seamlessly. We can reorder this with that. Hit update. Hit refresh. And now our text is on the bottom. So I hope you can start to see the power of the new block feature in advanced custom fields. It definitely changes the game for me. If you've watched my video about how to create your own dynamic block, it is a little bit more complicated to say the least. So this makes things extremely easy. We will definitely be doing more tutorials on this in the future. There's a lot more to uncover and discover. And remember, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, you know the drill, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys.